the Slasher Hour. I'm Lurch. I'm Darkman. And crack, sit back and crack cold and, and enjoy. We're here in beautiful Plainsfield, Wisconsin to visit the butcher of Plainsfield himself, Ed Gein. But before we get started, Darkman's got some stuff to tell. Uh, July Slasher birthdays. Happy birthday, Ghoul Father, Molly Mass, Jason Sna, Brandon Coffin, Sarah, Sarah Shanky, Angelia Calloway, Don For Forsyth. Forsyth, Dylan Dorn, and Liz Gurin. Gurin. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And that's Molly Moss and Moss. Jason Shaw. Sorry. <laughs> that's all right. All right, so we're here at the book. We are here at Plainsfield, Wisconsin, and we're going to show you uh, Ed Gein's grapes. So let's, uh, let's head over that way. There he is. There's his dad, his mom, his brother. Right there, that's where Ed's buried. There he is, the butcher to play until himself. Shred game. It's pretty crazy. We got some other things we're going to talk about, Ed, as well. But that's his grave right there. Do you notice they have chipped away at his mom's grave? Ed's gravestone is gone because it was stolen. Damn, people they, are taking dirt. Yeah, people are taking dirt off of his grave. Can't believe people are taking like pieces off her grave. It's crazy. So a special guest, we've got my own wife, Julie, Brian's wife, Robin, say hello. Hello. All right, so we all got some information about Ed, so go ahead. Here we go. Yeah, go ahead. So he was Edward Theodore Gein. He was born August 27th, 1906 in La Crosse. Um, his father's name was George, alcoholic, Augusta. Was his mother, she was extremely religious, and he grew up alongside his brother Henry, which obviously everybody's still up in arms to see if maybe possibly he was murdered his brother. Well, there is, at yeah. At some point, there's a theory about that. Yeah, there is. So, um, his mother was super overprotective and religious, and they she believed that women were the devil and all that great stuff. <laughs> right? Um, grew up in a farm in Plainsfield. He is from La Crosse. Yeah. So. Robert, what do you know about his crimes? Uh, I was just reading about what he did for. It looked like he was just basically a handyman. Yep. He did work for the road crew. Um, it said that after his mother's death, he pretty much, his mental health disintegrated and he just kind of lost it and went crazy. And most of his victims, they say, are um, almost mirrored after his mother. Right. So. <clears throat> and uh, a lot of this, and some of the graves in this cemetery, um, he has he was robbing some of the graves in this cemetery as well. Yeah, he was only found guilty of the crime of the woman that ran the hardware store. Oh, so the uh, the um, bar as well. Yeah, and the bar. So well, was, the only one he stood trial for was. I believe he stood trial for. No, nope, he, he only stood trial for the woman. You no, know, they were both women. Well, for the woman that ran the hardware store. Okay. And then he was found mentally, he was found guilty, but he was found mentally insane. Right. So he was, basically died in the mental hospital. But. 1984. Yeah. They found him mentally incompetent to. Stay on trial. Stay on trial. He was considered a suspect in the disappearance of a local babysitter in 1953. Um, the sheriff of the county apparently assaulted him badly by 
by banging his head and face into a brick wall, which made his confession inadmissible. Really? I didn't know that. Um, so, let's see. Keep, and then the sheriff apparently was overcome with guilt and died. Really? And so the sheriff's family considers him one of Dean's victims as well. Oh, okay. But it wasn't until right up yeah, until good. his death that he, um, right before his death, he uh, he um, started confessing some of his murders and stuff like that. But he didn't really divulge. There were so many more people that he was suspected of, of killing and digging up and all that right. stuff. But he didn't start yeah. giving like any information until right before they called it a, a was it like a clarity or whatever. Right. He well apparently was diagnosed with schizophrenia. So. Yep. Okay. We're gonna move on to the next spot. Okay. So, on November 16th, 1957, Bernice Warden was reported missing from her hardware store in Plainsfield. When the cash register was also gone and a trail of blood leading out of the back, her son Frank, a deputy sheriff, was suspicious of Gein, and the reclusive man was soon apprehended at the neighbor's house. The authorities sent, Gein, sent to Gein's home that night were greeted by the gruesome sight of warden's body gutted body hanging from the ceiling further investigations yielded more shocking discoveries including organs and jars and skulls used as soup bowls under questioning Gein confessed to killing warden and hogan hogan excuse me three years earlier uh additionally he admitted to digging up numerous corpses from uh for cutting off body parts Oh, what does that say? Proceeding in necrophilia and fashioning masks and suits of skin to wear around the house. With this, with this sort of evidence, authorities apprehended him, uh, con connected him to the murders of disappearance, disappearances. On your back. <laughs> We're not doing a drug deal. Disappearances in recent years were. Um, uh, I can't read the address. Right here. Recent years weren't able to draw any definitive conclusions. Uh, Gein's lawyer, William, entered a plea of not guilty by reason of insanity in January of 1958. Gein was found unfit to stand trial. He was committed to a state, to a central state hospital where he was variously worked as a mason, carpenter's assistant, and medical center aide. Um, he was found insane in early 1968. Um, he was petitioned for a release in 1974, which was rejected. Um, he was transferred to Mendota Mental Health Institute, where he died of cancer, of respiratory illness, on July 26, 1984. So in two days. Yep, right before he died. And what about uh, movies? What kind of movies were inspired? Lots of horror movies have been inspired by Ed Gein. Oh yeah, the the novel Psycho, um, which was the following year by Alfred Hitchcock. Additionally, Gein served as inspiration for the various movies Buffalo Bill, Sense of the Lamb, Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And this is our store where he took her from. It's now a true value. So that's where we are. We are at the hardware, the actual hardware store where he took um, Bernice Warden. Pretty crazy, right, guys? Oh. Looking cool. sicko. Yeah. Sicko. All right, we're going to go to the next spot. We'll see you there. Okay. Mayor, uh, Mr. Mr. Gein has now admitted that he is responsible for the death of Mary Hogan in Portage County on December 8th, 1954. 
as well as Bernice Warden. Um, the release, uh, this press release is made in the best interest in order to eliminate Mr. Gein from unnecessary suspicion and any conjuncture. But an avalanche of physical evidence has been recovered which will take weeks and possibly months to completely process. Well, back then, my God. Yeah, right. They didn't have anything except, what, fingerprints, probably? 50s, yeah, probably. Um, uh, let's see. They have a photograph of the physical evidence, which the newspaper believes is in very good taste mm. and therefore can be released to the public. I don't know if that's really true, though. I mean... That's rough. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Let's see. What was the date of her death? Her death was December 8th, 1954. Okay. So Bernice was November 16th in 1957. So he didn't so kill So this any. would have been years before. Right. And did it say that he had shot her and kidnapped her? Did it say how he took it her? It says a first degree murder charge will be warranted if ballistics report is completed. So uh, ballistics, I would guess then, yes. You know, yeah. it would have been, uh, that would be the only thing that they would look for in a ballistics test. Right. And then the court will order a sanity hearing. How'd that go for him? Um, Port well, Portage County told reporters that one of the heads found in his collection was that of Mrs. Hogan. Jesus Christ. We've got a head and face that is hers without question. All those years later? Yeah. Well, he probably preserved it in I a mean, jar. I mean, he must have... You know, I didn't say he dabbled in taxidermy, but you gotta wonder. Well, he made lampshades. You know, but you gotta wonder if he, like... He made an entire suit out of skin. By, by taxidermy, you know, because when, especially in Wisconsin, in those times, it, you know, you start out hunting as a kid. It's true. You learn how to dry and out hides. Yep. And you start out, you know, dressing, preserving hides, preserving the, the ant, you know what I mean? But I wonder if he had any type of a formal education in taxidermy or if it was just you know what was he doing you know using recipe books of preserves and pickling you know I mean well I mean I think everybody every good Wisconsinite knows how to pickle something yeah, that's true you wouldn't know you're from Minnesota you liar <laughs> I know how to pickle stuff though that's true that must just be a Midwest thing um they they gave him a lie detector test but there's no results listed but as we all know, those are completely unreliable. Oh, especially yeah, back then. Know. Especially the 50s. Um, but the sheriff said the head in question actually is the only is only facial skin and hair peeled back from the skull. Jesus. But could be easily identifiable. Miss Hogan disappeared in the late afternoon. Um, a pale green pickup was uh, in the area at the time. Um which doesn't match up with the 1942 pickup that was blue that Mr. Keen had. Hmm. So, Maybe he had an accomplice. Da, 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 da. Um, also found on the floor of Miss Hogan's tavern was blood, an open magazine, and a spent 32 caliber. Ouch. Um, the face and hair identified as Miss Hogan smelled of embalming fluid. Then added, but remember, she disappeared and never was seen again. She wasn't buried. Hmm. He indicated that he felt that all of the ten or more heads found at Gene's farm were the result of murder. Wow. So we gotta <laughs> wonder if maybe he was working with 
a funeral, uh, somebody that worked at the funeral yes, home I for mean, embalming. If and where do you get embalming thing. fluid? You don't just go and purchase that. I mean, it's obviously stuff. not regulated. Hikari, like, you no. probably stole I mean, it. Well, right. You no, probably I stole it. I mean, you're stealing graves. Like, I mean, exactly. But like, what if you had somebody that was helping you? Even if they were unintentionally helping. Right. Like I said, if you were said, well, you know, I I, I want to preserve this gear, you know. Right. I mean, a, a bear. Right. You know, what would you use a bombing fluid though? To prefer, for preserve. Yeah, but who's just gonna give you a bombing fluid? I mean, well, you sure, know, but you could have place. unintentionally supplied it with him, or really, if but if and you it stole it, wouldn't there, there be town. then? When, like, there be records of a, a theft then? Probably right. not. This is the this is the fifties, and you've seen the small size of this town. It's super small. Yeah, there would have been some kind of a record though of um, embalming fluid yeah, coming up missing at a funeral home. Would have to know? buy more, and you'd be pissed. So you'd be like, you know, that's true too. You at least file a report whether or not to be an investigation, right? right? No. I mean, because well, yeah, how much embalming fluid do you need to like preserve a face? What? But ten or so heads and skin. And, and I mean, skin. all, all that, that skin. Stuff? You're gonna need. Well, I would think you would need more than a gallon. Well, I mean, you, you go out on Monday, you, you sew half your suit, you go out on Tuesday and sew the next half of your suit. And you know? I, mean, I don't know how much embalming fluid it I don't know. Too. Well, you got to think like... I mean, uh, I'll I Google that and see if there's a, a, how much embalming fluid it takes to embalm right, a body. That's crazy. Uh, could you imagine just being a police officer and like going out to the Gein's property and not you know, really knowing what's going to happen or what, what you're there for and then you just open up the barn door and you see that lady like split in half well I year. wonder after that many years I'm sorry but well no that's human, that's that was Bernice Warden such... that they found yeah, okay. first but like and the, she was like a few days after that the I, you know especially back then preservation techniques on bodies weren't the greatest right. and that stuff breaks down so fast mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I wonder how much is really was identifiable or how much the sheriff is just guessing and pinning on him. I don't know. Probably. He's probably um, guessing most. Just an FYI, in most cases, one gallon of embalming fluid is needed per 50 pounds of body weight. Okay. So, yeah, he'd have to steal yeah, a lot of it. So, yeah, two gallons for one woman. It's to mean she's a 100-pound woman. But, I mean, he's not using this Oliver. This is Wisconsin, so, I mean, she could have been, like, a 300-pound woman, for all we know. <laughs> I mean... Well, and, and her... You're not a little real lady unless you weigh 280. Her tavern is north of Plainsfield. Mary near, Hogan's? Yeah, near Bancroft. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so we're nowhere near it. So this... I always thought this was the... Because it's an empty lot, but this is not... This is not it. No, no, no. Through to his house? Yeah, see, I don't even know where his house is. If a body like, is not embalmed and yeah. buried, it'll actually take 12 weeks to fully skeletonize. Up to 12 weeks. Okay. An embalmed body in a plain wooden coffin can last anywhere from 3 to 10 years. So then depending on the type of coffin used, a body actually can be preserved up to 100, depending on the 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 coffin type and the acidity and moisture of the soil around it. Okay. So three, you know, you're looking at a minimum of three years before it starts to break down. Unless he was using the and then, bombing fluid of the people that he was taking, you know. Yeah, their bodies are out. already there are or shouldn't be mostly. Yeah. Involved, unless the they're bodies very were poor. yeah. So maybe he drained the embalming fluid and used that. That's I I guess, but I don't know. Oh, can you really drain it, or would it be able yeah. to soak it in like a sponge? Uh, depending. I don't know. I've never drained an embalmed body before. <laughs> I don't know. If anybody out there knows how to do that, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Questions. You know. Got anything to say, you son of a bitch? Or are you just gonna sit back there and be Look quiet? Pretty. Okay. Big. Thank I mean, God we have Robin here to tell us all this scientific <laughs> stuff. Well, you know, I was just yeah, okay, because like, this look guy at questions. Out, if you look at like all the pharaohs and shit that they're mm -hmm. digging up in Egypt, some of those bodies look like brand new. I know, like it's I mean, crazy, not perfect, but you can actually like see features and you know. Yeah. So well, and, they, and they, they had nothing to work with. 
They were mollified. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they, they were, were. I mean, they didn't have chemicals like we had. You know. No, but they also took the the organs out of out of the bodies right. as well, and that probably helps. Right, that's the true. Decomposition. Yeah. Uh, down. Down. Okay. Yeah. But you but did say like 300, what it was like 300 years or 30 years it, it could have? It could last up to 100. It was perfect soil conditions and okay. a perfect casket. Be like well, we live in Wisconsin, time. so. That's, no. But it says to embalm a body, you have to wash it first. You massage the limbs to make them nice and relaxed, you know. You, you. And then you remove all the blood. Is there a happy <laughs> and replace it with the formaldehyde based Okay, formaldehyde based chemical solution. Oh, we're getting scientific now. Yeah, we are. <laughs> it contains methanol, ethanol, um, phenol, um, glutaride, and some dyes to overcome the paleness. So right. You know, it looks pretty. Um, the eyes are glued shut. So are the mouths. Because your eyes will automatically open. Oh, but yeah. Well, all the um, muscles in your face will just relax and you just. Yeah, so your eyelids stay open. So <laughs> they glue that shut. The lower jaw is wired shut uh, in the desired position. I want my lower jaw wide open. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I'm screaming. Uh, and my eyes wide open too. That was not where I was going with that. <laughs> I wasn't thinking that either. Well, you know, you were going to this next section. The body cavities are filled. Aw, man. This so looks kind of like a happy ending for you, Ryan. <laughs> I don't want my body cavities filled. Body cavities are filled and internal organs are drained of any gas and fluid. Yes, gas. Please, remember, if you put a body in water, poke holes in it. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to float, people. Like my the forensic God. Yeah, the forensic files we watched yesterday. God, those people are so dumb. Like, they've never watched a Dateline. Come right? on. <laughs> Right? Every body will float if you don't poke the holes in. Right? <gasps> <laughs> like so, they've never lost day, daylight. Well, if there's ever a murderer, <laughs> that's who did it right there. Only the, the drow next Ed Only Gein the drow right, there. right there. Only the next Ed Gein right here. <laughs> we have lists. You know, don't I do, I do need a new we coat. I do. I do need a new coat. Oh, oh my god. I need a new coat. So then, she once says. all that is completed, then you dress oh the, the, the body. <laughs> wash them style and make up the body which i actually knew a, a guy that did that um for funeral homes oh, okay he styled did hairstyling and um even some facial trimming you know from the men and applied the makeup to was his name know, ed no it oh. was not but he made a fucking bank doing that i bet because then you know it was like kind of an on-call thing too, so it was kind of inconvenient. I mean, you got to be really flexible, you know. Right. But um, yeah, I, he, he was oh God. He was making like around a hundred dollars a body. I mean, for a couple hours worth of work. What? And Ed was doing this for free? Yeah. Apparently. Boy, I'm in the wrong profession. Right, wrong profession. The goal is to see the deceased in a calm, almost serene pose. To help the family and friends in their mourning process to say goodbye. Which, okay, funny story. Okay, so my, <laughs> like, my aunt, Aunt Helen died, but like 20, no, like, whole silly 14, so like 13 years ago she died, right? And she was like richer than God, okay? Made all her money off by Abra. <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. so she died. And she lived in Chicago, so they had a service there. But then they had a service in Upper Michigan where she would be eventually buried and where the family was, right? So this body had been sitting around in bomb for a while, like a week, right? Yikes. Before it got up to Michigan where we all went traipsing up there for the funeral. Well, my sister, Kathy, who is not watching this, so I can call her out. She is a major introvert, okay? I mean, she never leaves her house, you know? She works from home, everything delivered, she never leaves her house, right? But she, mom drags her to this funeral to see Aunt Helen. Open ca casket, right? Oh, God. And she's waiting at the door, and I come in, you know, and she, she takes my arm, and she's like, I'm going up there with you. But my, cause mom is making me go up there and see her. And I'm like, okay, whatever, it's just, you know, dead body. I mean, it's just a funeral, right? Right. 
No. We go up there, all of a sudden, Kathy literally, like, went... <gasps> And like, she, like held her breath, like she could, did not move. And I'm like, what? what? It's a, there's a spider, a spider. There's a spider crawling on Aunt Helen's hand. A spider. Wow. And I'm like, oh my god. And she's like, there's a, oh my god, oh my god. And then she starts kind of shrieking, you know. <laughs> well, of course, my everybody thought she was warning Aunt Helen. So they're all like, oh, it's okay, darling. And they're like ushering her away, you know. And I'm like, please. Nobody even likes this. Guys. But anyway, yeah, spider, spider crawling. Oh, that's not what, that's not, that did not help the morning process for my sister. No. Probably not. No. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go past you. Yeah. All right, well, so we're going to go across the street and go get a drink. Be right back. Well, I hope you enjoyed our episode. Um, we had a lot of fun talking to the. So, uh, time. until next time, I'm Lurch. I'm Darkman. And you've been slashed. We're not drinking beer. That's weird. <laughs>